Jessica here, the Furry Family Coach. And today I had somebody in the group um, ask a question and I thought it would be a really great topic to actually come on live and do a video for you guys. If you're not in the group, I will put a link below in the description. Make sure you join um, or you can just search Facebook for the art of pet parenting. Um, if you are in the group, Thank you for being part of the family. We really appreciate you being there. Um, before I get started, okay, we are going to talk in this video about teaching your deaf dog bite inhibition. Um, but, P.S., if your dog isn't deaf, this is still going to work for you. So, um, before we get started, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. And um, if you're on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to this channel and click that little bell button so that you get notified when I post new videos. So let's get right into it. Let's talk about bite inhibition first of all. Regardless of whether your dog has hearing or does not have hearing, bite inhibition is important and while it is best taught to a puppy, it still can be taught to older dogs. It might just take a little bit longer. Um, you definitely want to make sure you have your patient cap on and patience, not like you're a patient at a hospital, but patience like being patient. I don't know, but hopefully you know what I mean. <laughs> you want to have um, patience. You want to have understanding, empathy for your dog because guess what? You speak two different languages, and if your dog is deaf, then they're not hearing you anyway. So let's talk about bite inhibition and how we work on bite inhibition when you have a deaf dog. So if you have a dog and they're deaf, they can still learn everything you're teaching any other dog that isn't deaf we just have to change those markers. So what do I mean by a marker? That is when our dog does what we're asking of them and we say yes, or good job, or we click that clicker, that's a marker. But when we have a deaf dog, we have to use our body language instead. So instead of saying yes, or good job, or uh, super, or whatever marker you're using, we're gonna use hand signals. You can also use your facial features as body language. Dogs pick up on our body language a thousand times easier than we pick up on theirs. And that is a very scientific term, you guys. It's a thousand times. Maybe not, I don't know, but it seems like it. So uh, they pick up on our body language so much easier than we pick up on theirs. So smile and laugh and have a good time and have fun. And when they're doing something right, really get excited and smile and let them know, yes, you did a good job. Um, a lot of times we'll use a thumbs up in place of yes. Um, when we're, we're telling a dog, yes, you did a good job, that's gonna be the marker is, a, is just a simple thumbs up. Um, or if they're doing something wrong, for example, when we're teaching bite inhibition, we're down here playing with our dog, and Kim was down here, but guys, I haven't um, been doing a whole lot of training with her lately because she hasn't been feeling too well. She's had some tummy issues. So that's why she, we haven't really been doing a whole lot of um, training and bringing you stuff online because she just, she's having some tummy issues. But, um, so I don't wanna force her to be in, in the video. She is uh, recovering well. Thank you so much um, for everybody who who has asked about her. So she's, she's on the mend, she's doing well, she has her energy back, but she doesn't necessarily wanna be in all the videos right now. So that's okay, I'm not gonna force her to do anything. Um, but anyway, so you, ha you have a dog and you wanna teach them bite inhibition. The best way to do this, and, and specifically with the person that was asking me this question, um, she's asking about her deaf dog being a little bit too aggressive and trying to get another one of her dogs to play. The best way you're gonna go about doing this and teaching your deaf dog bite inhibition and uh, boundaries and manners is with you playing with your dog. So you're gonna get down on the floor. 
often and play with your dog. And any time that they're doing good and they're being gentle enough to play and you know everything's going well and they're not biting down real hard, it's okay if they do get their mouth on your hand from time to time. As long as they're not being aggressive and they're not biting down, um, you wanna keep them directed to a toy as often as possible. And find what kind of toy your dog likes. Um, my dog Kim loves these soft toys that have squeakers in them. I just got her attention by squeaking them. Um, some toys are gonna, uh, some, hmm, some toys, some dogs are gonna prefer um, kind of like the rubber toys like Kongs um, because maybe they're, you know, larger and, have, and really are uh, good chewers and they just really prefer those more durable toys. There are also toys out there I think Kong makes them that are made, um, they're like super durable. They're made of like, um, goodness, I can't think of <laughs> the word right now. It just completely went out of my head and slipped, slipped my, my brain. Um, but maybe your dog prefers a rope toy and that's okay. Find the toys that your dog likes to play with and that's what we're going to use. And we're, anytime they, you can see them kind of start getting a little mouthy with your hands, redirect them to a toy that they would prefer to play with. Now, so I'm gonna tell you what we do with, with a dog who can hear, and then I'm gonna tell you how we do it with a dog who is deaf, who can't hear. Um, if your dog maybe is just hard of hearing, meaning like they have some um, hearing, but they don't hear well, then you can do both. I actually um, get off topic, well not really off topic, but let me tell you a little story real quick. So the first dog that I ever adopted on my own was, her name was Claire and she was a little Pomeranian who was um, not well off when I adopted her. I, she was pulled from a hoarding situation and when I adopted her, a lot of times when you adopt from a rescue or a shelter, they actually, um, get the dog all the medical treatment that they need and in this case they hadn't they had put the dog in a foster home which unfortunately was more of just the same for claire it was just another hoarding situation um and there was really little to no medical treatment happening when i adopted her she had a mammary gland tumor the majority of her teeth were rotting out of her mouth. She was a hot mess. She had recently given birth to puppies who I found out all passed away because she was so malnourished, which is how she got the mammary tumor, um, my understanding at least. So I took her to the vet, got her all fixed up. She was feeling amazing and quickly learned that she couldn't hear. So. What I do, even with Kim, who can hear perfectly well, um, and what I tend to do with most of the dogs that I train, and the people, actually, that I train to train their dogs, um, I use a combination of vocal cues and hand signals because I got used to, with my very first talk, dog was deaf, so I got used to doing a lot of body language and a lot of hand signals. So this is what you're gonna wanna learn um, or you're gonna wanna put in practice, put in place with your deaf dog. So the first thing I would suggest you doing is sitting down with yourself or with everyone else in your household and figuring out what hand signals you want to use for what um, cues, for what you're asking your dog to do. For instance, you want a marker letting them know that they've done a good job and they're gonna get rewarded. Thumbs up is a really good way to do that. Letting them know that you're not happy with something that they have just done. A frown and maybe pulling your hands away, which we're going to talk about with bite, in, bite inhibition. So, you know, they can, they can read that in you. Um, when you want your dog to leave something, just a, you know, a simple hand to the ground, for instance, you know, you can't really see me right now, but for, if there's a toy here and you want your dog to leave it, just put your hand kind of in a chopping motion right down to the ground in front of the toy. Leave it, right? So there are all different kinds of things that you can do. You just need to map them out, know what you want them to be, and be consistent with them. Um, so for bite inhibition, 
get on the ground, play with your dog as often as you can, multiple times a day. If your dog starts getting too mouthy, they bite down and you're not, you don't want them to bite down, of course, the first thing we're gonna do, if your dog can hear, you're gonna say, ow, like that, and get up, move your hands away, pull away, letting them know that what they did is not okay. And now play is ending because what they did is not okay. Give it a few seconds, 15 seconds or so, get back down and start playing again, okay? Now, if your dog is deaf, doing that ow isn't gonna help, right? So what we wanna do is pull our hands away and here's the gesture that I've learned and that I suggest doing. This is gonna be rubbing one hand on top of the other is gonna mean gentle, okay? So pull your hands away, do the rubbing motion for gentle, letting them know that what they did is not okay, what you want is gentle, and you know, putting your hands behind your back, getting up, walking away for 10 or 15 seconds, coming back, right? Playing with them again, in, um, engaging them in play, as long as they're being very gentle, like you want them to be, you're gonna give them a thumbs up. Yes, gentle, yes, right? So you're gonna give them the thumbs up, you're gonna give them love and play, you're gonna keep playing. That's their reward for being gentle. So um, this is how you're gonna teach your dog, your deaf dog, bite inhibition. Um, this is something that every dog needs to learn. A lot of dogs start learning it when, when they're with their litter mates, but Generally, when they come into a home setting um, and maybe they're, they're not with li their litter mates anymore, they do need some reinforcement. They need to know, okay, now I'm in a totally new situation. Are things different? Are things the same? Can I play harder? You're much bigger than my litter mates. Maybe I can play harder with you. We're still gonna wanna teach them that what the limit is, what their boundaries are, and playing with them often and letting them know what their boundaries are by if they're not deaf, giving an ow and you know putting your hands behind your back, getting up and walking away, or if they are deaf, pulling your hands away, giving them the, the gentle cue, right? Getting up and walking away for 10 or 15 seconds, coming back, letting them know what you want. That's the key, right? We can't expect our dogs to do what we want if we haven't taught them what it is that we actually want them to do. So set them up to win, okay? So a lot of these things, um, a lot of the things that I teach my clients when I come into their homes, the very first things I have to teach them are you need to be patient, right? You need to be consistent. There are what I call my seven canine commandments and I cover them in this book, Seven Miracle Steps uh, to Get Your Dog to Obey Commands <laughs> Even If They've Failed Before. I normally just call it the Seven Miracle Steps because it's such a long title. So if you hear me say the seven miracle steps, this is what I'm talking about. Um, this is gonna cover everything. I start out teaching all of my in-home clients because this is the foundation. This is what you need to put in place before any of the actual cue training can take place. Um, you need to have these in place. You need to understand what your dog is thinking, how they're thinking, how to interact with them in a way that they're actually gonna be able to learn from you. And this is what is gonna get you there. I put a link in the description. I don't know if that's above or below. So I don't know. It's somewhere, find the link. Um, I did put it there for you to grab your copy. You can get a paperback copy if you're in the US. You can get a digital copy wherever you are in the world. Um, highly recommend you getting a copy of this before you start trying to train any cues any behaviors whatsoever. So um, again, guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Help my channel out. Um, get some, oh, if you're on YouTube watching this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Really would help me out a lot. Um, and make sure you smash that bell right next to it because you'll get notified anytime I post a new video. And again, if you haven't joined the group, make sure you join that group because that is how you can interact with me uh, more personally. It's, it's kind of difficult when I'm just posting videos, right, to actually interact with you guys. So if you go join the group, we can actually interact and help get your questions answered. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video. I hope you like this video. If you have a deaf dog, 
let me know in the comments. It was just out of sheer coincidence that my first dog happened to be deaf. So it was a, um, it's really easy to, for me to say, you know, I've always done verbal cues as well because at the same time we had a dog that could hear and a dog that couldn't hear at the same time. So I was doing verbal cues and hand signals at the same time. I've always done it. So I just continue to do it with every dog that I train, whether they can hear or they can't hear. I recommend that all of you do the same thing. It can't hurt, right? You're giving double reinforcements. You're asking, you're letting them know with body language, which is the best way that your dogs communicate because guess what? They don't speak English like we do. Um, so you're just, you're, you're, you're giving even reinforcement to your dog, letting them know what you want, letting them know when they did something right, right? When they're done something good, let them know it. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and have a great day. I'll see you in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.